And yet another series continued. The beef this time gets even more personal, as the tension, instead of coming from the locker room, will once again be originating from the stands and the media, as many players unfortunately have gotten the brunt of their fans' distaste for multiple reasons. If this is your first time savoring the animosity, I'm going to be going over five players that were despised by their own fan bases. And with that, here are five more NHL players that were hated by their own fan bases. Unlike a few on this list, Kessel wasn't subjected to post-hatred. Rather, Phil the Thrill was subjected to the distaste from Leafs fans while he was still suiting up for their team. And really, things in Leafland weren't exactly running smoothly during much of Kessel's time spent playing for the club, as Toronto failed to make a postseason appearance for the first four seasons of number 81's tenure as a Leaf. Top it all off in typical Toronto media fashion, and for Kessel, it was a recipe for immense tension when it came to the fan base filling the stands. From waffles to jerseys, Leafs fans were sure to let Kessel and the team know their displeasure, as they endured during the 2014 15 season their longest losing streak in franchise history of 11 games. And one man that was shouldering much of the criticism that season was the hot dog connoisseur himself, as he was dubbed by the media as difficult to coach. Even though Kessel eventually got the last laugh in Pittsburgh, there's no doubt that he wasn't exactly a fan favorite during his time spent as a Leaf. Speaking of Pittsburgh, remember those back-to-back -back Stanley Cup final runs? No, not those. Whoops, not those either. The ones that were both against the Red Wings. Yeah, those. One player who definitely got the short end of the stick after all was said and done was Marion Hossa. As Hossa, along with Pascal Dupuis, was dealt to the Steel City mid-season in 2008 from Atlanta. And while playing on a line with Sidney Crosby and longtime teammate Dupuis, Hossa was a key contributor to Pittsburgh's success during their first of two consecutive deep postseason runs. As a winger, notched an impressive 26 points in 20 games played in the playoffs for the Berg. But as fate would have it, this simply wasn't Pittsburgh's year, as they failed to capture the cup against the deep team at the time in Detroit. Hossa, in his mind, wasn't going to face the feeling of failure again anytime soon, and in an effort to finally capture the cup, the forward decided to sign with the team that he ironically lost to not long before. And, as you would expect, Penguins fans didn't take too kindly to Hossa switching sides. Therefore, the Slavic sniper was naturally dubbed the modern-day Judas in Pittsburgh. But, once the tables turned the postseason after, no one appeared more disappointed than the player who played on both sides during the back-to-back -back series. Now, if you know anything about fans in Beantown, you'll know that the fan base for years has been torn between their current starting netminder and the one that manned the crease during the postseason of 2011. And while fans have been treated to a plethora of postseason appearances, the Finnish netminder has seemingly been dubbed the goalie that can't win a cup. Not long after the goaltender was awarded the starter position for Boston, Rask led his team to the Stanley Cup Finals of 2013. But the B wasn't able to squeak past Chicago and lost in six games. Years after he captured the Vesna in 2014, Rask yet again was the man between the pipes for Boston during last postseason. The postseason where Boston was forced to witness the St. Louis Blues capture their first Stanley Cup in franchise history, following a seven-game tilt. Therefore, despite his remarkable numbers over the years in net, until he's able to win a cup as Boston's starting netminder, many fans unfortunately will continue to criticize their current representative between the pipes. Get an unfair shake here in the city with the media and the fans. You think it'll? Selfish and childish is what I would refer to it as being. And he doesn't understand what it means to work. You know, this guy's been pampered. It's from the, the West, I, I don't get it. He's. He's just plain selfish. What else can you say? That was just a taste of the immense dislike that the Senators fan base displayed as soon as they learned of Heatley's intentions of leaving Canada's capital. But before the forward would request a trade in Ottawa, he would request one in Atlanta, but for much more personal reasons. Therefore, Heatley naturally saw moving up north and becoming a senator 
as a first start. The previous Calder recipient instantly made offensive waves in Ottawa as he recorded back-to-back triple-point seasons with the club. And before the 2007-2008 season commenced, Heatley decided to make his relationship with the Senators organization official, as he signed a lucrative six-year, $45 million contract. Going into the season, at least, Senators fans had to be hopeful, with offensive juggernauts besides Heatley and Spezza and Alfredson leading the way. And after making a Stanley Cup final appearance, the club was able to make the quarterfinals, before getting swept by Pittsburgh. And it wasn't long after, during the offseason of 2009, that Heatley would request a trade, as Heatley had become increasingly unhappy with the organization and his role in the team, under coach at the time, Corey Clouston. Therefore, to Senators fans, seeing a player deciding to leave on his own accord shortly after inking a long-term deal with the franchise logically made them pretty incensed, to say the least. And for Heatley, who ended up moving to San Jose upon his return to the nation's capital, didn't exactly get the warmest reception. From constant boos to Heatley action figures being placed in washroom urinals, fans were sure to let the forward know that they didn't really appreciate the move. biggest problem with this. It's not like this team has been lighting the league on fire and their performances against Buffalo and against Nashville and the jerseys are being thrown on the ice. You would think that the Leafs players would understand that there's just frustration involved and for the players to decide that their response to that, their answer to the fans is not saluting them after the game. It's completely ridiculous and it comes down to leadership in the locker room where a player has to understand that this is brought to the table I have to stand up and say this is not the right idea. This is not the best response. That's where leadership and smarts and understanding the market comes into play. Similarly to Phil Kessel's situation, Phaneuf was routinely, during his time in Toronto, taking the brunt of the fans and media's criticism. The team was playing some of its worst hockey as a franchise. But unfortunately for him, the captain wasn't exactly helping. As his production seemingly dropped as a leaf, the penalty minutes he accumulated reached the triple digits. Besides the on-ice antics, fans became increasingly frustrated with the complacent off-ice interviews. I think that the score is, it reflects the way that we played. I don't think there's much more that needs to be said. We got beat and overall lack of emotion from the man wearing the C. Phaneuf was also, throughout the league, viewed as overrated. Shortly before he signed the seven-year, $7 million contract with Toronto, Phaneuf was voted in a Sports Illustrated survey as the most overrated player by his peers. Therefore, once the defenseman was shipped to Ottawa, fans just like this one were overjoyed to finally see him go. In case you missed it, the Toronto Maple Leafs dealt Dion Phaneuf and everybody else with the Ottawa Senators in exchange for-